Hey guys, Lightane here. This is the final part of my Final Fantasy trilogy. And what will I be looking at today? The anime that Square released, of course, called Final Fantasy Unlimited. As I mentioned in the other two parts of my trilogy, which you should totally watch by the way, Square had their unstoppable Final Fantasy series. Not only did they want to release a movie, but they also wanted to release a TV show, and this is what we got. Final Fantasy Unlimited tells the story of a few different main characters. Our story begins when Tokyo is attacked by two giant creatures. One white one with a sword looking face and one red one with a massive gun. These unexplained monsters and events starts up the C2 government organization. Years later our two main heroes, I and Yu, learn that their parents have gone missing and naturally they conclude that they must be in Wonderland. Wonderland is a magical place that all these different creatures live including the ones that attacked our city. I learns of a train that only appears in a certain place at a certain time and is convinced that this is the way to get to Wonderland. She is right, of course. On the train, they meet up with Lisa, the other main character of this show. She is also interested in going to Wonderland to help rescue the missing parents, but for other reasons. The last main character they meet is Kaze, a mysterious loner that has no memory of anything, but he does come equipped with a massive golden gun and if he loads three specific cartridges into them, he can summon incredibly powerful beasts. He travels with the group, but he honestly doesn't really want to. He's just sort of strung along. The characters learn that there are some bad monsters living in Wonderland, and they are controlling it with force. There are four elemental lords with another higher person lurking in the shadows calling all the moves. The first half of this story has the kids going from place to place on the train, looking for their parents and helping out the locals to stop a bad guy or fix a problem. The second half reveals the person in charge of it all, Earl Tyrant, and his nefarious plans of resummoning chaos, a creature that can cause extreme devastation in order to, you guessed it, rule the world! He took the children's parents to try and learn where the missing pieces of chaos were, and now the kids have to stop him and get their parents back. Along the way, they also fight Mackenchi, the only other character to really ever pose a threat to Kaze. He kind of works for the Earl, but he has his own secret agenda too. They make many friends along the way and even unlock some of Kaze's memories, all the while trying to help as many people as possible and save their parents. Will they get them back? Well, you'll just have to watch to find out. So as you can see, Final Fantasy Unlimited Story is a lot closer to a real Final Fantasy game than that of spirits within. They are in a strange magical land. There are four elementals causing chaos. Hell, Kaze even uses summons in order to defeat them. There are even some cameos and mainstay characters from other Final Fantasy games such as Chocobos and Moogles. With that said though, the story isn't particularly good. There are a few twists thrown in the show which are, you know, alright, but for the most part the story is quite slow and boring. And the main plot of the show is always pushed to the sidelines because each episode mostly deals on the monster of the week. Every single episode falls into this routine. The heroes go to a new place, they learn of something or someone bad and then they fight it and don't do so well. Then they convince Kaze who never actually wants to do anything to do something about it and he loads his gun, summons a monster to fight the first and then they continue on to the next place. I cannot stress this enough how formulaic this is. Literally every single episode does this with little things for the main overarching story thrown in. There are to be honest some good stories in the show and some great moments with all the characters, but a lot of them are pretty forgettable. Also, when Kaze does his summoning, it takes several minutes to do. Watching the same slow animation every time is a complete waste of my time. Most of the characters in the show are also pretty shallow. While most of them do get some character growth by the end of the show, it isn't particularly much or good. Take Kaze for instance. He has amnesia, so we all know what's going to happen. He's going to slowly find out his memories over the course of the show, and by the end of the show, he's going to realize that he did something or that he knows something that will either put him in danger or put everybody else in danger and then he has to fix the problem with his newfound memories. And guess what? That happens. Because this story hits so many tropes and cliches, it's honestly hard to watch. While I personally was interested to see what happens at the end of the show, I tuned a lot of it out. I ended up putting the show on in the background while I was doing other things because I didn't really need to watch what was going on. I could just pick up key points here and there and figure it out. The animation for this show is of a lower quality to that of some other animes that were around this time. Whilst the worlds and some of the characters look fantastic, it does look a little cheap. It looks like it was made in the 80s and not in 2001. It does use 3D animation for the gun scenes, which is pretty cool the first time you watch it, but like I said, after 25 episodes of the same thing, it gets pretty boring. They use 3D animation for other things such as the train, and it does
does give a cool contrast in the show, but it always looks out of place. Due to the critical failure of the Spirits Within movie, Square had to call off some of their other endeavours. This show originally was supposed to be two seasons long, and it does feel like that. The first half of the show is pretty slow, setting up all the characters and the world, whilst the second half is a lot more rushed to cram in as much of the story as they could before they were cancelled. The end of the show is very rushed, and there are so many questions that go unanswered, which for me is incredibly frustrating. The show did branch out to a few graphic novels and other mediums in order to finish off the story, but that just leaves the show lacking. I hate to say this, but Final Fantasy Unlimited is not worth it, even though I tried really hard to like it. This show has a much better premise than the movie and it feels like one of the games, but it just didn't quite deliver. It had chocobos and elementals and summons and magic and some great locations and even some great fighting and some great scenes in the show, but then the story and the plot were just so slow and boring and predictable. While the few twists at the end of the show were actually interesting, to slog through the rest of the show just to get up to that point is not worth it. The lower quality animation and the constant repetition in every episode does get tiring very quickly and takes away anything that the show had going for it. The first episode is good but they do the same thing for 25 episodes and honestly if they had changed it up even just a little bit this show could have been better. Hopefully one day I get to watch and review something else that Square has done from the Final Fantasy universe, which is actually good, but for now I'm just gonna have to stick with the games. So what did you guys think of Final Fantasy Unlimited? I don't know very many people that have actually watched this anime, but I know of a lot of people that know of it. Maybe you're one of those people that have watched it. Anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!